Hey, it's Brett with Recording Crave. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Greatly appreciate it. Hey, in this video, I want to talk to you about mixing background vocals. I am I just finished up this background vocal mix for this song. This is a song I co-wrote with the singer. The background vocals for this song are loosely inspired by the song by Carrie Underwood, Before He Cheats, that she released in 2006. So without further talking, let's jump into this and let's talk about background vocals. So we're going to give a quick listen to just the uh, chorus of this and then in with the whole mix, but listen for the background vocals, the oohs and ahs. Gone down to the river, no stones to throw Gone down to the river, gonna lose control I feel it, I need it to be forgiven Gone down to the river, gonna cleanse my soul Gone down to the river, Lord, take me home I feel it, I feel it, yeah, yeah, yeah this Okay, so that's the first course. It's got a country, rock, southerny feel to it. So let's solo up the vocals and what I have to work with here are six vocals. There's two high parts, two mid parts, and two low parts. The high parts are panned hard left and hard right. The mid parts are panned at 10 and 2 and then the low parts are panned at 11 and 1 on the pan knobs here. So these are all routed over to this aux called ooze and this is where all the uh, EQ and and saturation and compression are on and then this send goes over to the verb and the effects so let's listen to just a small portion of this in solo with with all the processing on <sighs> Okay, now I'm going to turn the processing off. That means all the verb, all the EQ and compression. Ooh, I lose control. I feel it. I need it. Okay, so very dry, but uh, we're going to spice it up here. So let's come up to the Ooze Aux channel and let's see what I have done here. I am using the Slate VMR virtual mix rack and let's jump into this. I'm going to bypass all of the individual plugins here. I'll keep the uh, tracks in solo and I'm going to start engaging the plugin so we can hear what it's doing. So let's listen to this right now. Ooh, I lose control. I feel it. I need it. Now, I'm using the uh, Slate's version of the 414 on here, the 414 Normal. And I've got the proximity turned up about 2.8. So that gives it a little warm sound and it pulls a little bit closer. Now, I could turn that proximity up a little bit, but it's going to get a little thicker sounding. And I am don't wanting too much more low end on this particular vocal part. So the next plugin I have on is the Virtual Channel. And this is just giving me a little bit of saturation. Ooh, I lose control. I feel it. I need it. Again, it pulls it just a little bit closer. Now, I love uh, plugins used incrementally. I find that my mixes can sound harsh and brittle if I'm trying to do everything with one plugin. So I will use it incrementally among several plugins to get the sound that I'm hearing in my head. So the next plugin I have on is the FGN. You can take a look at at the different dials here. I have mostly a boost here, boost here, a cut here. This is nothing. And then I have a big cut at 146. I'm taking all the low end out there. So let's hear this. Ooh, I lose control. I feel it. I need it. So it just gives the vocal more clarity. That's what that is doing. But now I want to put some sheen on these background vocals. So what I have going here is the SSL. And let's take a listen to this. Ooh, I lose control. I feel it. I need it. Okay. So that gave me the sheen that I was wanting. And then I have the trimmer on. And this I have about 2.7 dB cut here because of all the EQ that we added actually adds more volume. So we want to pull that back a little bit. So when I bypass it, the, the plug-in, 
everything is going to be almost the same volume. Ooh, I lose control. I feel it. I need it. Okay. We're off to a good start there. That sounds pretty good. So let's go over to the CLA-2A, which is the compressor plug-in I'm using on these vocals. And let's listen to what this is doing. Ooh, I lose control. I feel it. I need it. Ooh, don't take me home. I this pulls the vocal forward even more, and it, it gives the uh, overall vocals just a tad more excitement. The next thing I have on here is the decapitator. I want to add some saturation to these vocals. Um, they're pretty clean right now, but I just want to dirty them up a little bit. And you can see where I have the drive set here. I will go over the settings here because they're really hard to see. Low, I have a low cut at, uh, straight up at 12 there. And the tone is set about 10:30, or I'm sorry, 11:30, and then the high cut is uh, just a couple dots down there. The mix is set about two o'clock, and this is just slightly under all the way. I mean, this is almost all the way to zero dB. Uh, I wish they would change their dials on these, but this is from Sound Toys Decapitator. Ooh, I lose control. I feel it. I need it. So by the dial here, we're just adding a little bit of attitude. So, all right, got to love a little saturation on there. Okay, so the next thing, I want to get these vocals wider. We got them tight, so that CLA-2A glues them together, takes all those uh, six different vocals and glues them together. Now I want to spread them out a little bit to the sides. So here we're, here's what we do. <laughs> So you can see where the settings are. I have the stereoized slider set to here. And then the mode, I am using one. One sounds better than two. Let me play it for you real quick. I'll show you. Ooh, I lose control. I feel it. I need it. Now I have not read the manual to see what the difference is, but I like the sound of mode one better than mode two. And you can see where these settings are. And then I just click the learn button to get crossover points. Then what I have on is the MicroShift plugin from Sound Toys. This is a great little plugin. This is just the default patch and I have the mix set about uh, 11 o'clock right there. It has a little bit of a chorus effect on. Let's listen to this. Ooh, I lose control. I feel it. I need it. Okay. I love what that does. It just adds just a little bit extra. So let's go to the next thing I have on here. And I may not need this, but I put it on anyway. It's the Vocal Rider from Waves. And I have the range set pretty tight so it's not uh, going up too high or too low. So I want the vocals to stay in these parameters here. Ooh, I lose control. I feel it. I need it. Okay. That sounds great to me. Now let's jump over to the reverb and delay section. So how I have this set up, I'm using the Relab LX480. And I don't have a lot of reverb on here actually. So I have, it's, you can see where this is set. I'm just using a plate room and I have it set just a little over one second on there. And let's take a listen to this. <sighs> Listen for that tail of the verb. Ooh, Not a lot. Ooh, I lose control. I feel it. I need it. Okay. But I want to add a little bit of echo or delay on that reverb. Now, this is where it's going to get exciting. Let's jump on here. Okay. So we have this reverb here. This is the H delay from Waves. I use this plugin on every mix. There's about three delay plugins that I use quite often, but this one always makes every mix I do. So let's listen to what this is doing. And I do have it set on the ping pong setting here so it bounces left to right. Ooh, I lose control. I feel it. I need it. 
So it took that little reverb, made the reverb a little bit bigger by adding delay in there. So you got these delays bouncing around, and then the last two delays you hear go left to right. So I got that. I'm getting two birds with one stone, right? So let's listen to that again. Ooh, I lose control. Boom, boom. Okay, let's bypass that and listen to with the verb without the delay. Ooh, I lose control. I feel it. I need it. It's there, but it's not quite as present without the delay. So let's turn that back on. And then the next thing I added to that is this Pro Q3 from FabFilter. Great. EQ plug-in, and I'm just shaping the reverb and the delay just a little bit, taking a lot of low end out. I could probably take even more out and probably still a little more high out. Let's listen to that. Here's without. You listen to that tail. Now listen to the tail. Very subtle. You, know, you could get more extreme with that. And everything is so subjective. So what I might do, you might do different. You might not even like that, but this is what I did for this mix. Now let's listen to this all in context. then every little incremental step that we've done just added some spice to those background vocals. Now that might be tame compared to some of the things that other people are doing, but for this track, that's what this track needed. And always mix and make decisions that your track needs, not what somebody else might be doing. So this might not work for your track, but this might you might come up to a situation or a mix that you have where this will work perfect or something like that. So hopefully that was helpful. I would love to hear down in the comments below what you have done to your mixes to spice up, to tighten up, to get a little bit of, of a spread on your, vo your background vocals. And I would love to hear those comments. So this is Brett with Recording Crave. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video. Have a great day.